Family and friends, CBN and Regent University staff, we all gathered together yesterday to honor my mother, Adelia Dee Robertson, and mom passed away last Tuesday on April 19th. Several dignitaries joined us in this tribute to Dee Dee Robertson, including Bob McDonald, former governor of Virginia, and Winsome Earl Sears, lieutenant governor of Virginia. So we'd like to share with you some of the special moments from Dee Dee's celebration of life. Even though we share in the sadness that she's no longer with us, we want to rejoice today that she's being raised up and in a new body, and she's seeing her heavenly father. John 11, 25 through 27 says, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever who lives and believes in me shall never die. She knew how to press on and endure in the face of danger and uncertainty because God's plan is infinitely better than the present trials. We were humbled to be part of her Bible study. We felt privileged and we never took it for granted. She modeled that the ground at the foot of the cross was level and Jesus was always our focus. We loved her and she loved us. She made magic happen. Her creativity and artistic eye surrounds us on this campus. She was brilliant. We've all been touched by her. Her biggest joy was having her family around her. All she ever wanted to do, let's come together, let's have good times together, let's have a great dinner, uh, let's play together, let's praise God together, but let's have a good time. And that kept going even after the stroke. One of mom's signatures uh, every year was to do this wonderful Easter celebration called an Easter egg hunt. So a week ago Sunday, we all gathered. And keep in mind, she passed away Tuesday. This is Saturday. And here she is smiling because she gets to party with her family. And she recited off all their names. She kept track of every birthday. And that's my mother. And you get a real picture of what she was like and how she persevered. Her life overflowed with a love for people and for God's word, the two things that will last for eternity. At 90, she had to learn to speak, walk, and eat again. I believe my mother, with all of her great achievements, shone the brightest these last five years in her suffering and her pain. She bore it with such dignity and courage she was stripped of everything she loved to do, yet she set her mind to do what she was able to do, which was to pray, read her Bible, and host her beloved Tuesday morning Bible study. I believe my mother received a new anointing and calling, which was to intercede on behalf of her friends, family, the ministry of CBN, and Regent University. She prayed for every great grandchild, every grandchild, and I think she would want us all here today to pick up the mantle of prayer and intercede now even more for CBN, Regent University, my father and my brother. She was their greatest prayer warrior. Pastor Dan asked me earlier this week if I had a word to describe my mom. And after I thought about it a bit, I said, courageous. And that became one of the stones on which our family is built. Thank you, Didi, that you finished well. You ran your race and you did it with courage. We need a few more heroes to get to 94 and don't quit on God. I thank God today. She finished her assignment. She stayed with God. Thank you, Didi, for being faithful to your first assignment. That was her family. Are you grateful she stayed with her man for 70 years? Amen. When she would talk, you could see the love of this place and deep in her heart, the same vision that Pat had for raising up Christian leaders to change the world. Thank you for being obedient. And we thank your wife for being a great helpmate to you because 
all of this is because you obeyed. I'd like to present to you this flag of Virginia on behalf of a grateful state. Thank you, Pat. Was a picture from from the funeral yesterday of my mother. I call her the glue of the Robertson family, and I give her full credit as a co-founder of CBN. Without my mother, there would have never been a CBN, an Operation Blessing, or a Regent University. Yeah, it was a remarkable tribute to her, Gordon, to all those qualities that make her so special and that have left such a legacy, not just for her family, but for all of us, really. And we just are grateful. It was yeah. a beautiful tribute. And congratulations, Mom. You finished well. You <laughs> ran the race. Amen. I think we all agree with that. And welcome back to the 700 Club for CBN News. Faith and the First Amendment. The issue came before the U.S. Supreme Court yesterday in a case that has major implications for the role of religion in public life. It involves a high school football coach suspended for praying on the field after the games. CBN's Jenna Browder has more on this story from Washington. Coach Joe Kennedy is in the national spotlight, taking his case all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court. The issue at hand, whether praying on the field with players after games was unconstitutional. I just want to be able to practice my faith after a football game. Kennedy was an assistant football coach at Bremerton High School in Washington State. In 2008, he started praying by himself after games. Nobody should have to be fired or worried about their job if they show any signs of faith. At first, his prayer was a quiet moment by himself. Players eventually began to join him, though, as he prayed on the 50-yard line. The school district says Kennedy's religious speech could have the effect of pressuring other students to pray and open the district to lawsuits. Officials told him he would have to stop if he wanted to keep his job. It came to the point where they said, if you are being able to be seen anywhere on the football field, in prayer, then we're going to have to suspend you and ultimately it ended my career. The school district says Kennedy was violating the Constitution. While some parents supported him, others said their sons felt pressured. If he goes to the 50 yard line, he has a message that he wants to deliver and so the players would follow. The harm is to those who are the minority students, the minority faiths, the students of no faith. That's where the harm comes, that they are being pressured into doing something that they don't fundamentally agree with. In oral arguments Monday, liberal justices brought up this point. Justice Elena Kagan expressing concern players could feel coerced into participating. Kennedy's attorney pushed back on that notion, stressing there was no evidence of coercion on Kennedy's record. At the same time, many conservative justices appeared sympathetic to the coach's case. Justice Samuel Alito asking whether a school employee could be punished for carrying a Ukrainian flag on school property. And Justice Brett Kavanaugh questioning whether the school could fire someone for making the sign of the cross before a game. Today on CBN Newswatch, the coach and Jeremy Dice of the organization representing him, First Liberty, spoke about the hearing and the case. What coach was doing was just simply taking 15 to 30 seconds on a knee by himself at the 50 yard line. And the First Amendment clearly protects that kind of activity. And if it doesn't, then the promise of the First Amendment is all but dead. It feels like the first time I actually had a court that looked at the facts and I was represented very well. Whichever way the court rules, this case could have major implications for the role of religion in public life. And a decision from the court is expected in June. In Washington, D.C., Jenna Browder, CBN News. Changes are likely on the way at Twitter now that owners have accepted the offer from the world's richest man, Elon Musk, to take over the online platform. Musk has been critical of Twitter's approach to online speech. He calls himself a free speech absolutist. Many conservatives have complained Twitter has been biased against them. Musk wants to change that. There will clearly be changes from a constriction in what people could say. And that's going to be a tight wire act, especially in this environment. 
Musk himself tweeted, I hope that even my worst critics remain on Twitter because that is what free speech means. Former President Donald Trump told Fox News he does not plan to return to Twitter. It will take some time for changes to appear on the platform and the deal still needs to be finalized, which could take weeks or months. The U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom wants the State Department to add Afghanistan to the list of the world's worst religious freedom violators. CBN's Tara Mersner has more on this and other red flags raised in the group's annual report. Conditions have deteriorated since the Biden administration's hasty withdrawal from Afghanistan eight months ago. For the first time since 2001, the country is back on the religious freedom blacklist. The designation is reserved for countries with systemic, ongoing and egregious religious freedom violations. The 2022 report comes as the Taliban pushes for international recognition as the legitimate government there. The Taliban's return to power has had an immediate chilling impact on religious freedom and on the broader human rights environment. The study offers key insights into how the president and Congress implement the 1998 International Religious Freedom Act. The outlook is grim. There have been very few bright spots. and. And it shows the need for religious freedom to be a part of U.S. policy. And that's why renewed attention is on Russia, which the commission considers an enemy to religious freedom. And fear persecution in Ukraine will rise amid fallout from the ongoing war. The turmoil that uh, exists in that region is of great concern to to you, sir, and to the rest of the world. China is also getting bad marks as the commission reports the government is trying to reprogram entire communities while conducting business as usual around the world. Sinicization of religion, that essentially uh, changing the text uh, in line with a communist ideology. That's not religion. Syria makes the list of worst offenders for the ninth year in a row, with India, Iran, and Nigeria remaining areas of particular concern. In Washington, I'm Tara Mergener, CBN News. Russia's foreign minister, Sergei Lavrov, said the threat of a nuclear conflict should not be underestimated in Russia's war on Ukraine. But the Armed Forces Minister of Britain is downplaying that warning, telling the BBC he didn't think there was an imminent threat of escalation. The Sec Secretary of Defense says the U.S. hopes the war in Ukraine takes a toll on Russia. We want to see Russia uh, uh, weakened uh, to the degree that it can't uh, do the kinds of things that uh, it has done uh, in, in invading Ukraine. America and NATO allies are stepping up military aid to Ukraine to assist in fighting off the Russian attacks. Meanwhile, Russian attacks are still escalating in central and western Ukraine. With the brutal battles underway in Ukraine, refugees continue to pour into eastern European countries, mostly Pol Poland. And CBN's Operation Blessing is there to help them and to provide much needed food. Operation Blessing is here in Poland. We're still, after six weeks, seven weeks of war, we're still here blessing the people of Ukraine that is escaping the war. Today, we're here in this industrial kitchen that God provided to us to start cooking hot meals. This has been such a blessing for people that has been walking for days, hours waiting at the queue at the line in the Ukrainian side. Right now, here's, this is the border. The food truck is behind me. I know where volunteers and workers are here on the ground serving hot meals. Thank you for your donations, for your prayers for our brothers in Christ in Ukraine. We're going to keep working here at the border for the Ukrainian people. Thank you. Thank you indeed. We will keep working. Gordon? We will. We'll keep working in your name. That's just one of the outreaches we have in Ukraine uh, on the border of Poland providing those hot meals. We also have a warehouse facility where we're shipping food and we're shipping it throughout Ukraine and through the re refugee camps in Poland and other places. If I can get a map of all the different centers, you can show the, the, the total outreach here. All those different places, even in eastern Ukraine, where the fighting is the heaviest. We want to be there for people, and we're there in your name. So if you want to be a part of it, all you have to do is give to the Operation Blessing Disaster Relief Fund. 
A lot of different ways you can do it. You can call us, 1-800-700-7000. Just say, I want to give to the Disaster Relief Fund. You can write us at CBN Center, Virginia Beach, Virginia, 23463. Just put Disaster Relief Fund in the memo line of a check. You can also text OB Crisis to 71777. Either way, do it now. Be a part of helping people in need. 1-800-700-7000. The traffic on the highway began to slow down. The next thing Rob Hall remembers is waking up on the pavement of I-65. Rob was riding his motorcycle when he was hit from, from behind by a truck. And his family will never forget the details of the day they almost lost him and the prayers that saved his life. I had no idea he was on his motorcycle that day. I was literally walking through the door whenever I got the call from my mom. Yeah, that's just something I never imagined, that like life would just kind of pause for a moment, stop. The first thing I heard was a woman on the other end saying, your husband's okay, but he's been in a motorcycle accident and he's on his way to the hospital. Normally when people say that, like, it's not really how it is. And you always hear about how like life could just go so fast, but I've never felt that until then. What if that was the last time that I hugged dad or saw him leave and I didn't even really say bye? October 2nd, 2020. Rob Hull was riding home from a meeting in downtown Nashville when he was hit from behind by a truck and launched over the handlebars of his motorcycle. His head hit the pavement as his body skidded on the highway. His wife Carrie, his son Mason, and his daughter MJ rushed to the hospital, contacting family and friends for urgent prayer for his survival. We were texting all of the people that we knew just to pray for him and we were praying for him on the way there because we had no idea how bad it was going to be or what to even expect. Through prayer, I've seen God work miracles, and we just needed prayer. We needed people to rally around us, and we needed to pray for Rob. Rob was taken to the nearest trauma hospital, fading in and out of consciousness. So with COVID restrictions, they only let mom in there to go see him. So that kind of felt like a slap in the face to just like be like, great, well, yeah, we're not going to hear anything until, you know, mom hopefully lets us know immediately and that was a moment where i think me and my sister weren't scared of the intimacy of really praying together and with faith and boldness and expecting i think that's something i'll always really appreciate looking back was getting to share that with my sisters that we had each other to pray together they waited anxiously as emergency room staff took x-rays and a ct scan Concerned he may have a broken neck, cracked vertebrae, or a brain bleed. Still unsure of Rob's condition, Carrie cautiously approached her battered husband. I think that's when the fear started to set in, was the minute I saw him in the bed and was almost afraid to walk any closer to see what I was going to see. I remember looking down and seeing his boots and his clothes on the ground and they were shredded like the boots were shredded and that really hit me how how bad it actually was and then when I came up to the side of him I could see all the road rash and everything on on the whole right side of his body Rob drifted in and out of consciousness while they waited for the results of the CT scan finally Carrie was able to FaceTime MJ and Mason the first thing that I saw was my dad sitting there with a neck brace on. He could barely talk and he was just like looking at us and it was scary, but it was it was good to see that he was talking to us and he was there alive when probably shouldn't have been. It was such a deep breath of relief that was like, okay, he's conscious. But, uh, you know, so seeing someone you love in that state of just pain was just really hard to look at. After several hours, they received amazing news. Doctors determined that although Rob had suffered a traumatic brain injury, he was clear to go home that same night. I remember this nurse looking over my chart. She goes, well, we can't find any brain bleed. We can't find any cracked vertebrae. We can't find any broken bones. You are lucky. 
And I was laying there still in my neck brace on the table, you know, and I said, I'm not, this isn't luck. I'm blessed. This is, this is God with me, you know. <laughs> He was, yeah, God was with me, I mean. There was no broken bones or internal bleeding. I just, I just knew, okay, God, God had him. I mean, God really protected him that day. It was just a miracle just knowing how bad it really could have been. And then just seeing my dad walk out of the hospital that night and hugging us and everything, like it was truly a miracle. I just remember just, deep appreciation for everything that I got to share with my dad and continue to get to share with my dad um, because of his recovery from the wreck. Just joyfulness that we get to still go on adventures, make things as creatives and yeah, I mean, every time I see him, I just so, so, so thankful. Knowing that Rob could possibly not be here today is just, I mean, I'm so thankful and grateful that God spared his life that day. Rob made a full recovery, thankful for answered prayers in his family's desperate time of need. I'm thankful God spared me. I am. He could have taken me and, and called me home. I could have woken up in heaven and not known even what happened because as I woke up on the concrete, I didn't even know what had happened. So it could have been a transition. Uh, to heaven, but I'm thankful he spared me. The comfort of friends and family praying for us was huge. And then I was feeling the peace of the Holy Spirit, which I know came from the power of prayer. Prayer works. That's why we pray. And the intimacy of prayer, that intimacy that you come into contact with a living God, you share your requests. You con come into contact with other believers. That's why we emphasize on the show, when two or more agree touching anything, it shall be done for them by my Father in heaven. That's why when we pray the Lord's Prayer, it's always about our Father. Uh, it's our daily bread. It's, it's in community. It's in that prayer of agreement that wonderful things can happen and you know that God is with you. You know that he is a very present help in your trouble. You know he's right there. He is Emmanuel, God with us. All of these wonderful things happen when we just humble ourselves in prayer. It's not just intimacy. It's also humbling to say, God, I can't do this on my own. This is impossible for me. But with you, all things are possible. I turn it over to your hands. I surrender this to you. And in that, miracles happen. Now, we've got some prayer requests in front of us. I'm going to read some of them. Here's a prayer request that my son would be healed from PTSD and from depression. Here's another one to be healed of bilateral neuropathy in my feet. And then one for a church for God's choice for the right pastor. This person is asking for prayer for a financial blessing. They say we've been struggling for so long. Then someone else asking for prayer from healing from scleroderma. It's an autoimmune disease for which there is no cure. And then this one, for my son to be healed from COVID effects. He's been in ICU for six months, may need a lung transplant. Wow. Join with us in prayer. Whatever your need is, uh, just say it out loud to the Lord. Um, you know, just it's in that confession and, and I believe in out loud prayers. And if you need someone to agree with you, we're here. And so let's, let's do that. Let's claim that great, wonderful verse when two or more agree touching anything. Let Terry and I be your two or more and you agree. Just say it out loud and touch it. We will lay hands on these requests. We will touch them. We will lift you in prayer and God We'll do the rest. Let's pray. Lord, we come together in agreement and we touch these prayer requests. We touch everyone who is praying right now with us. We agree over these requests. Anyone with an autoimmune disease, anyone with effects from long COVID, anyone still in treatment for COVID. Lord, anyone who needs 
provision, anyone who needs direction, what to do, what to choose, anyone suffering with PTSD, anyone suffering with depression, we come into agreement covering all of it now. And Lord, we confess we can't do this, but you can. And with you, we can do all things. So we join with you because that's your promise, that you get to be in us and we are in you. We join with your infinite power and we agree touching it right now that you are our very present help in time of need. Lord, we need you. We need your miracle power. Stretch forth your hand to do signs wonders, and miracles, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Terry, God's given you. Yeah, there's someone, you have a very serious condition. You have like a, your intestine, the wall of your intestine is breaking down and you're having some leaking into your system. God is strengthening and healing that for you and the infection that has been resulting will be resolved in Jesus' name. Be healed. Um, there's there's someone praying and you're actually you're praying over a hospital bed and, and I just see um, someone lying in the bed and they've got this covering over their um, head. They too were involved in a motorcycle accident. They had a helmet on, but somehow or other there are micro fractures in the, the front part of the skull. God is healing that. He's taking all the swelling down. He's able to heal all the bones. He's able to restore normal blood flow. He's able to give life and life more abundantly, life and function, everything being healed right now in Jesus' name. There's also associated with some, some problem with the left eye. God is healing all of it right now. In Jesus' name, be healed and be made whole. There's someone else. You have an unusual blood disorder. Um, you're being treated for it, but the prognosis is not good. The percentages are not good, but God is healing you. Just lift up your hands and begin to praise him as he gives you new life. Um, there's, um, I, I don't know how to describe it, but from the right ear, um, uh, there's been spinal fluid and uh, a discharge of that. I don't know what caused it, or I just know that particular symptom. God is healing. He is restoring. In Jesus' name, be healed, be made whole. Someone else with a, a spinal condition, and um, it's like a, you, you had some kind of fall or some kind of accident, and you actually felt your vertebra move. Um, it's like you, you, you felt your entire skeleton, your back move. God is healing. He's putting everything back into place. Nothing's going to be out of alignment. No nerve is going to be damaged. All of that is going to be whole now. In Jesus' name, receive it now. We thank you for it. Lord, we thank you. We thank you that you are the healer, the restorer. You are our savior, our forgiver, our healer. Uh, you are provider. You all are, are all in all. We thank you for your love towards us. We receive it now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. If you've been touched, let us know. Let us share in your good report. Give us a call, 1-800-700-7000. If you need prayer, we're here for you. We want to stand in agreement with you. All you have to do is pick up the phone and call us, 1-800-700-7000. Well, I want to remind all of you because we have sitting on this table before us literally thousands of prayer requests that have come in that we are in day two of CBN's annual week of prayer. At noon, Eastern time, all week long, our hosts and our staff are going to be lifting up the needs of you, our viewers. We're going to be live streaming these services on cbn.com slash week of prayer. And if you haven't done so yet, you can send us your prayer request by calling our toll-free number. It's 1-800-700-7000. 
or you can give us your prayer requests at cbn.com. You can also write to us at CBN's Week of Prayer, CBN Center, Virginia Beach, Virginia. Our zip code is 23463, and we'll send you a free brochure and the scripture card that are included in the mailing that's already been sent out. So let us hear from you. Welcome back to the 700 Club for this CBN News Break. A federal judge has granted a temporary restraining order preventing the Biden administration from lifting Title 42 until it expires next month. Title 42 is the COVID-related public health order that allowed immigration officials to quickly expel migrants. The judge granted the order in a case from Republican-led states. Critics, including many Democrats, have warned lifting the order could lead to a flood of illegal immigrants. Mike Evans, founder of the Friends of Zion Museum, has been selected as the first evangelical to help lead the March of the Living through Auschwitz. The annual event brings Holocaust survivors, their descendants, and other individuals from around the world to Poland to remember the Holocaust and raise awareness about anti-Semitism. Evans will lead the march this Thursday alongside the mayor of Jerusalem. He has dedicated his life to rebuilding relationships between Christians and Jews. We'd like to remind you, you can always get the latest from CBN News by going to our website, cbnnews.com. Trapped in the dark with no way out. That's how a single mom in Thailand felt when the COVID pandemic shut down her business and confined her to her home. She and her daughter were all alone and there was no one to ask for help. A short time before COVID-19 hit Thailand, Ploy lost her job. As a single mom, she didn't know how she would provide for her six-year-old daughter. That was the first time CBN's Orphan's Promise stepped in to help. We gave her equipment and supplies to start a business selling food in front of her house. The business changed our lives. I made more than $20 a day, enough for rent, food, and my daughter's school fees. Then the pandemic hit, and Ploy was forced to stop selling prepared food. The government said all businesses had to shut down. People could not leave their homes. I couldn't sell any food. We were all alone. It was the worst moment of my life. There was no one to ask for help. I felt like I was trapped in the dark and I couldn't find a way out. That's when Orphan's Promise came back to Ploy's community. This time, we brought food packs filled with rice, eggs, noodles, fish, and milk. We also gave them hand cleaner and face masks. My daughter said, look, mom, they've come to help us. We've got food. I thought, we're saved. After the government eased the shutdown, we also provided capital for her to buy food and other supplies to restart her business. Business is better than ever. My daughter never goes hungry, and I'm saving part of my income again. I'm also able to share food with my neighbors. You helped us and brought us joy. Thank you. I love these young moms that are raising children and in the midst of the last couple of years with COVID have had to be so unbelievably creative and how to survive. I mean, can you imagine nobody to turn to? You're stuck in your house. You can't do your business. What are you going to do? Well, we were the opportunity that she needed to have hope, not just for the moment, but for her future because we've invested in her. And she's worth investing in. She's a hard worker. This is just one family story, one mom and child that you are making a difference in. But there are thousands of them out there that could say thank you to you easily if they would see you face to face. I want to say thank you, 700 Club members. When you join, you are doing so many things all around the world and right here at home in the United States as well. 65 cents a day, $20 a month makes you a 700 Club member. Maybe some of you already are 700 Club members, would you consider going up to the next level, which is 700 Club Gold? That's a gift of $40 a month. It makes a huge difference when you make that jump. 
Some of you might want to go up to the 1000 Club level. That's a gift of $84 a month. Or join our 2500 Club at $209 a month. You can see there are founders. They join us at 417 or more a month. Listen, ask God what he'd have you to do because he's given us the privilege of being able to touch and change the lives of people all around the world. And you can do it from the comfort of your home. Numbers toll free. It's 1-800-700-7000. Just call and say you want to join. And our way of saying thank you to you today for caring about the needs of others is to send you Pat's latest book. I think you're going to love it. The Power of the Holy Spirit in You. The Holy Spirit is the gift of Jesus to the church. When he left, he said to his disciples, don't leave this room until the Spirit comes. And so we want you to understand the power of the Spirit at work in your life. Pat has written this book after 60 years of ministry being guided by the Spirit of God, and we want you to have this. It's our gift to you. So call now. Well, Jesus never promised that his people would live a trouble-free life. He did promise that their labor would not be in vain. Unfortunately, many believers don't know how to access this divine plan to redeem suffering. So international speaker Catherine Ruanala wants to show you the way to get double for your trouble. Australian author and TV host Catherine Ruanala is also co-pastor of Glory City Church in Brisbane. Catherine says that many believers don't understand that God wants to redeem the suffering we experience. In her new book, Double for Your Trouble, Catherine explains how we can learn to see the blessing, even in our trials. Well, Catherine joins us now via Skype. And Catherine, we welcome you back to the program. What a delight to be here with you. I was so blessed to hear you praying for the sick and just seeing what the Lord is doing. We're so grateful for the work of CBN. Oh, thank you. Well, I want to talk to you about this book you've written, Double for Your Trouble. Where does the, the idea or the concept of God giving us double for our trouble come from? Scripture tells us in Isaiah 61, 7, that for our former shame, pain, and disgrace, God wants to give us double recompense. Zechariah 9, 12, return to the stronghold, you prisoners of hope, for I will restore double to you. In fact, it's the whole story of the gospel, redemption, beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, the garment of praise instead of. It's a divine exchange. But we need to partner with the Lord in faith to see that those promises come to pass. Because the promises of God are not just in inevitabilities. They are activated by us in faith receiving it. And so I really want to share with people what it looks like to bring the pain, the shame, the disgrace, as you said, in this world we have trouble, but take heart, I've overcome the world. And the Lord showed me a divine exchange table and in a vision a few years ago. And it's like when you have foreign currency, Tom and I travel the world and we get foreign currency. And when you've got foreign currency, you can't spend it in the nation that you're in unless you exchange it for that currency. And I believe shame, pain, and disgrace, biblically, we can come in faith and bring it to the divine exchange table to receive double recompense. We can sow the pain, we can sow the dishonor and receive his double in exchange. This whole spiritual concept was revealed to you during a particularly dark season in your own life. What was going on then? Oh, we've seen so many hard things, and as, as so many do, in this world we do have trouble. Uh, I remember uh, someone was giving us a, a hard time online, um, and they making nasty videos about me when we first started um, in ministry. And I wanted to try and explain and say, oh, don't say this about me. But my pastor used to say, uh, never explain. Your friends don't need an explanation and your enemies will never accept one. So instead, we just decided to sow it. So we went, okay, God, this looks like shame, pain and disgrace in the media. So we sowed it in faith. Thank you for double recompense for that. And you know, the exchange rate of heaven, the double as you sow it in faith is extraordinary. And today, praise the Lord, we're on television all over the world preaching the gospel. I had a situation uh, with my eldest daughter and she was away from God and I just, my heart was breaking. Mm. 
And so the Lord challenged me, sow it in faith, sow the pain. So we brought it to the exchange table. Thank you, Lord, for double recompense. And, you know, not only has God now fully restored her, she is. we are just so excited about what the Lord's doing in her life and the way uh, she is honouring God. But God, during that season, brought in so many young adults into our church, calling me Mama and Tom Papa, that we saw not only restoration, but double for our trouble. And in the same way, even in my own life, with uh, you know abuse and things that had gone on in my childhood, rather than choosing to remain as a victim, I felt the, the Lord asked me to bring it to the exchange table, bring the shame, bring the pain, and exchange it, believe in faith that God wants to give you double. And as I did that, the Lord not only healed my life, but great restoration, wholeness and healing to my heart. He's now taking me all over the world to see people saved and healed and delivered and restored. So whatever the enemy meant for evil, God wants to turn around for your good. It's it's the turnaround year, 2022, double, double. <laughs> well, Catherine, you recommend keeping what you call an I remember when list. And one of the first memories on that list for you is when you were 12 and the key that you had didn't work in your door. Talk about that. <laughs> well, you know, sometimes it's those little things that are so, so real in our hearts. And God wants us to remember, like David, when he went uh, up against Goliath, he, he encouraged himself by remembering. I remember when God did this, when the lion came against me or when the bear came against me. And keeping a little I remember when list on your phone, I remember when God opened that blind eye. Oh, I remember when God opened that deaf ear. And for me, my I remember when list first began with, I remember as a 12-year-old when I couldn't open the door and I asked you for help. I'd been trying and trying until I was just about in tears. And I said, help, Lord, and click, the door opened. Now, that might not seem like a miracle to anybody else, but I knew God had done that. And your personal history with God is worth recording so that when you're having a difficult time, you can put it on your I remember when list and remember that he'll do it again. And I, I stir myself up when we have a miracle meeting coming up this weekend in Virginia, here in Woodbridge on Saturday night. Uh, Global Awakening have offered to open it up to the public. And so we are expecting to see amazing miracles. But I stir myself up to encourage myself by remembering the miracles that he's done before. The Bible says, feed on the faithfulness of God. And so I believe that as you bring even your disappointments, even those things that you haven't seen to the divine exchange table, God wants to give double for your trouble. He wants to help you and encourage you if you will just decide I'm going to pivot to hope. I'm going to choose hope. I'm going to return to the stronghold as a prisoner of hope, believing and declaring that God will restore double to us. He promises all of that to us and we need to activate it in faith and reach out and go to that exchange table and let him do that in us. Thank you so much for being with us again. I want to tell our, our viewers that your book is called Double for Your Trouble. It's available wherever books are sold. Catherine, as always, wonderful to have you with us. Thank you. Thank you so much. God bless you. You too. Gordon? All right. We've got some time for some email. Our first question comes in from Cindy. Hi, Gordon. On one of your shows, you mentioned how to divide your paycheck between tithes and offerings, saving and paying yourself and spending. And what were the percentage? Well, Cindy, I'll be glad to give you that slide again. It's called the 80-10-10 rule. And if we can get that slide up, 80% of your income uh, set aside for your expenses and make sure you live within the 80% of your income. Uh, that includes everything, uh, mortgage or rent expenses, car expenses, insurance expenses. Uh, make sure you also, with 80% 80, 80 of expenses, make sure you have expenses for fun. Uh, I always encourage people, don't tighten down your budget so much you're not having fun, because uh, that's, that, that's one, of, one of the great things of life. Um, another thing a lot of Christians miss is that 10% for savings. Uh, make sure you're paying yourself. What are you going to live on in retirement is a big question for a lot of Americans. 
And so if you think Social Security is really going to cut it, think again. Uh, that savings is wonderful, that when you have 10% of your income going into savings, uh, that's a good thing. And that accumulates over time. This isn't some get-rich-quick kind of thing, but over time, if you pay yourself 10% of your monthly salary, you'll have enough for investments. You may have enough to pay a down payment on a house. There are a lot of things that can come. And then most importantly, put God first. Make sure you tithe, because that's when you can claim all the benefits, the promises of God to those who tithe. Here's a word from 1 Peter chapter 5. Give all your worries and cares to God, for he cares about you. For Terry, for me, for all of us here, God bless you. We'll see you again tomorrow.